There's another big conversation that has been making the rounds, and it's the ban on styrofoam and other single-use plastics here in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial capital. So much has been said, but you know how it is with democracy. There needs to be the coming together of different ideas. So mm -hmm. this morning on the show, we'll be speaking with someone who has spoken out about this. Is a governorship candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 governorship election here in Lagos State. Baribor Rhodes Viver is here with us on the program. There's so much a lot of people have said about this. And you put out a statement. Good morning, by the way. Thank you for joining us on Good the morning. morning. Good morning. Drink. Thanks for having me. I know you watched the match yesterday, and I imagine that you have your <laughs> response. Uh, but something else which you've also been speaking about is... Maybe, maybe, you know what? Let maybe, me get your thoughts. No, 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 no. Let's hear your thoughts. Let's get your thoughts. On, on, on football. I think you have done justice to the match. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I mean, we want, we we want, we want to get the Super Eagles positive energy as they move forward. So we're hoping that they take their lessons from what they just experienced and show us why they're super in the next match. Okay, uh, nice to say that. That's, 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 that's very political. Right? Uh, and the rest. <laughs> so let's talk about um, this um, single-use plastic ban and um, ban on styrofoam. You put out a statement, and for a lot of people, it was mixed feelings. We see what this does to our drainage channels, what it does to our environment, how dirty and terrible you know these places look it's not fit for international consumption if i can say that for the capital commercial capital of nigeria but you have said this approach is not the right way to go about it so walk us through your own thought process as some form of alternative policy for this so for me um yes we must tackle this environmental um problem that we have with single-use plastics we must show that we have a holistic policy that will be sustained and sustainable to lead us so we don't keep going around in circles. Some of these videos they are showing are from three, four years ago. I remember we've talked about this several times, but the problem keeps on persisting. Why? Because there has not been holistic policy formulation that carries carries along the manufacturers, carries along the citizenry, and does a phasing out of this means of production, which is styrofoam or single-use plastics. And we're advocating that, you know, we should have a policy that is more holistic. You show the alternatives to the manufacturers. You carry them along. So you don't put them in a situation where the government... So you put the government in a situation where it's a partner, as opposed to constantly being an enforcer and cleaning up, which is not sustainable. For instance, we want to use biodegradable materials moving forward. How do you liaise with the manufacturers to say, listen, you can no longer, we don't want you to use styrofoam. You have eight months, right? These are materials that you can use to substitute and let us work through it, right? Let's, let's work through it together to see, okay, so moving forward, people will no longer be using styrofoam. Not just a knee-jerk reaction of banning, banning. You know, there's this, this uh, method that government constantly uses that does not show a well thought out public policy, right? And there are many things that, many ways that governments outside the country have been able to achieve what the government is trying to achieve in a sustainable way, right? So for me, I'm advocating for a phased out approach, a situation where manufacturers and the government come together to agree on an alternative means of production and alternative material for production and a more sustainable means whether it's waste separation from the homes whether it's more uh, waste collection centers um, pricing the cost of environment into plastic bottles so that there's a fixed cost of a plastic bottle which then allows for people to be able to recycle and understand that this is waste to wealth right and also creating a situation where the producers have a longer responsibility for the life cycle of their product, right? And can earn more money if they recycle this product. So these are more sustainable mm. means that will give a long-term um, effect to what we want, as opposed to just making these announcements every couple of months, every couple of years, and you still see the same problem perpetrating and perpetrating. All right, Mr. Rosviva, uh, we'll come back to you just in a moment, but let's also take the thoughts of uh, the people who have been speaking on X. Uh, maybe you can react to some of them when you hear them. Uh, Tsunji Iromini says, at last, uh, Fola 
that's Lagos that's State government, government right? uh, finally did the right thing. We don't need those, uh, okay, I can't use those words in there, single-use plastic for anything. I use same water bottle and food flags per year throughout prior and secondary schools. Uh, where use another word, I can't use an air. Plastic being shared at parties must stop. And this one is from Smoothie XVD. He says the styrofoam is biodegradable and the plastic sh could be recycled. All we need is a good disposal system. They don't need to ban. Interesting so, thoughts. So, there. how long does it take for the styrofoam to, <laughs> to, degrade. to degrade? Is the question again. And. Uh, you know what, let's just take As a more. matter of fact, it yeah. takes a long time. According to climate change experts, it takes a long time mm -hmm. to degrade, pretty long time. We're talking about decades here. And sometimes they find their ways into the canals and from the canals they find their way into the rivers and the oceans. And, uh, you know, uh, aquatic life, they mm -hmm. mistake it as food and they take it in. You know, so these are the dangers that we find in consumption of aquatic life right. that also goes to affecting public health. Very important part of that yeah. conversation. We'll come to Mr. Badabo Roads Viver in a bit just to mm. uh, clean up the network connection so we can have full value with that conversation. But there's more uh, on this. Uh, Benita says styrofoam is non biodegradable and non recyclable. So that's another angle. To begin with, the good disposal system, then the ban is highly appreciated. With this ban, styrofoam will be reduced, and that's just a step, but a great one, as you said. Okay, uh, this is Delo. I hope I pronounced that well. Kyle, you help me whenever I miss it up. Okay, <laughs> the ban is the better Delo. option. <clears throat> Delo. Delo. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. it. <laughs> the ban is the better option with our bad social behavior and disposing materials like this that aren't easily decomposed. Or, uh, those are your perspectives. So, a lot of people are supporting government here on this particular one, but Mr. Badawa is saying, uh, yes, we agree that this is posing an environmental issue and a problem to the environment, but mm -hmm. it has to be faced out. We're going to get back to him as soon as we establish a better network connection. Uh, uh, this one see. is from Peddy. Uh, they say, I don't know if it's a he or a she, how is this oh, going okay. to improve the economic situation of the country? This same styrofoam packs is what some people use to earn a living from their production to wholesale. <coughs> Putting a ban on it wouldn't make life more harder, I guess it says, would make life more difficult mm. for the citizen as people who have no source of income, uh, coupled with the high rate of unemployment, the people should please be considerate. Uh, Mr. Rodsviva, thank God you are back. Um, one of our uh, you know, commentators is saying something pretty instructive here, and he, he or she says uh, they are biodegradable and could be recycled. And that calls to mind, uh, you know, a time under a former administration in Lagos where the public policy was to have uh, different, um, you know, containers for different types of waste. And we don't quite see that much in public places anymore. What can be done, you know, to make that kind of policy more enduring, more sustainable, perhaps in partnership with uh, the, the, the private sector? Yes, waste separation at the root point of collection makes the system extremely efficient. But then, to one of the tweets that you just highlighted, a holistic policy takes into account the earning power, jobs that have been created, you know, and the fact that we live in such a time that the economy is extremely difficult for so many people. People are struggling with being able to earn a living. These are the factors that must be taken into public policy formation, right? So going back to your point, establishing waste collection points that separate waste at the first places where these waste are generated would actually give you a better solution, right? Also, understanding that, yes, styrofoam must be phased out. This is, this is a very good direction to go. But you must carry the stakeholders along and give them an alternative. For instance, there's recycled card that most Western um, countries are using for food packaging, food delivery, and all sorts. And it's a material that can then be used in the shape of the styrofoam that we currently have, right? So offering this alternative and working with stakeholders and producers in Lagos State to phase out styrofoam is a sustainable way to go. You cannot just announce a ban and people have bought um, bought um, products and the inputs to be able to produce all this styrofoam and you think that that is just going to go away, right? People are still going 
going to continue using these products and then you then have to start enforcing and vilify sure that you know we come to this sustainable point where nobody is using styrofoam anymore because it has been phased out okay let, let, mr rosvivo uh, i know you have a quarrel with the fiat and what you consider hasty or knee-jerk approach of this policy. But sometimes, when you look at the statement, it appears that there's an urgency of now from the government, given the tones of dirt that is being circulated across the state, especially along drainages. Uh, do you think that they want to do this as a, a maybe some form of a shocker, just to raise awareness that you're talking about before maybe they get to the table of negotiation and conversation? Because sometimes, uh, just like the issue of Nin and all that, some, if you tell Nigerians, go queue and uh, there's a deadline, they don't meet those deadlines. So do you also give, maybe give them benefit of doubt that they needed to do this to send a strong message uh, to the populace? No, I, I feel that the government has consistently taken a lazy <laughs> approach to public policy formulation that does not take into account the need for sustainability, whether it is... Um, long-term development plan that people don't have access to online and they are building buildings and their buildings are being destroyed um, because they're saying they broke the law when the system should be able to have a portal that they can go and see is building on this place breaking the law or not right okay to so this just an announcement and there are <clears throat> many people that earn a living from the production of these materials right i expect that government should take out a situation where this is our public policy. In three months, we achieve this. In eight months, we achieve this. We're going to introduce alternative materials for this um, for this um, production of this new type of um, food holders. And also, we are going to ensure that plastic bottles, there's a pricing on it that allows for sustainability. You see, when you have a system mapped out like that, then you have you can actually move forward. You don't consistently keep going back and forth, back and forth. We create a robust recycling system so that water bottles, there's a ten um, environmental tax on it. So whoever is holding that knows that they are holding money and can easily access that money um and recycle. Right? I've always said that legal state after is human capacity, the biggest resource we have is waste because we are such a small land size and huge population so produce a lot of waste that can easily be accessed and we must take this um this value as some take it very seriously right and maximize returns on it and we need to see that kind of um, outlook from the government not just announcing banks this is a major resource that if we manage well we can actually generate a lot of revenue even at the local government level Right, so as opposed to just dumping, because we don't have waste management in Lagos State, we have a pick and dump waste system, and waste management involves, you know, creating different routes for the different waste products, recycling them, and ensuring that you're getting maximum benefit from this waste. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, seeing that this uh, policy has been announced, some laws were even said to have been back in this particular decision, if looking through those laws, well, you find some other uh, issues entirely. So I'd but like to... I'm bad entrance to any... Okay, we lost you for a moment, Mr. Rhodes Vivo, but you can land on that thought. But I was going to also put in uh, this point, uh, because... The Lagos State government has announced the policy, it says it's with immediate effect, it says that Loma and Kai are meant to enforce this. Uh, how far are you willing to go to ensure what you think is right is done? Are you maybe planning to protest, go to courts, uh, at least on behalf of you know, people? What are the things you think uh, you are willing to do to ensure this particular policy idea which you have brought mm. on board is what is at least considered and perhaps implemented in virtually. So, so issuing out a statement is a call on the government to be more humane in their policy formulation, to also understand the reality of a lot of Nigerians and producers and manufacturers currently in the country trying, struggling very hard and living in very difficult times. And we are calling on them to make a more holistic policy formulation. The direction they are going is a positive one. We need to get rid of single-use plastics and styrofoam. We do. There is no doubt about that. But they should step back now and create a more holistic 
um, approach to solving this problem. So we don't have to come back to this problem a year from now, two years from now. Right? There's actually an opportunity to move this conversation forward. So we're just calling on the government to do the needful and operate and create a more holistic um, system uh, in addressing this problem. Well, finally, Mr. Rhodes Vivo, you know, we saw your post on X, and definitely there will be some that will, you know, uh, interpret, you know, putting, slotting politics into uh, what you have said about the ban on um, uh, single-use plastics. But we also have that uh, verdict from the Supreme Court that decided, finally, the Lagos State governorship election uh, tussle. Uh, what's your reaction to that judgment, and what next after this? Um, so, for me, I, 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 I'm shocked by it, um, because for me, the spirit of the Constitution is to protect the integrity of the sovereignty of, of the country. And there is no serious country in the world that would allow for a chief security officer, governor or president to have sworn an oath of allegiance to another country or state. Be that as it may, the Supreme Court has made its ruling and um, has set a precedent. So this means that now, if you sworn allegiance to any country to take up arms for them, you can also um, be the chief security officer and number one citizen of Nigeria. So that's the new status quo in the country. That's precedent that has been set. Um, for me, I'm now focused on continuing my community engagement. There are many, many problems that we saw along the campaign trail that we'll be looking to solve in our own small little way to make a contribution. I don't think um, you need to be in office to make a difference. And we'll, that's what we're going to contribute to. We have our healthcare insurance process, uh, micro health insurance that we're bringing to the people. And we're going to look at the different communities that I um, visited that are in dire need of support. And we're going to try and give us more right. support. As we can. Great one, Badibo Rhodes Viva, Labour Party governorship candidate uh, in Lagos State, uh, joining us. Uh, Viasm. Thank you so much for your thoughts and insights, uh, of course. Thank you for having me. We'll keep tabs me. on you on uh, your next journey or how you follow through after the Supreme Court verdict. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for having me.